Hey, Jalen, how's it going? You know, just uh, with this being, uh, you know, first time all star in, in, you know, your home city, just what, what are your thoughts with given how different this year is and how, you know, protocols in place, how different is how you plan this in your mind celebration wise and how it's actually playing out in, in real time now? Yeah, well, it's a lot different. Um, uh, just the where the world is now still. Um, COVID is still, you know, out there. So definitely your approach is different, you know, understanding of, uh, of everything. So that limits family time, that limits, you know, festivities, that limits everything or stops it completely. So um, having an awareness of that is still important. Next question, Jalen, is from Alvin Whitney. Hey, Jalen, everybody. Uh, thanks for your time, man. Um, just wanted to get your, your your feelings on on the latest voter suppression stuff that's going on and, and talk about the efforts you guys are, are continuing to make to, to make a change and, and, and these type of things. Um, voter suppression is real. Um, it's been various communities here, especially in the Atlanta area and other places as well. Well, where they've you know, voiced not having enough workers to work certain places and certain polls in certain neighborhoods and things like that, just a lack of resources overall. Um, and I don't think that's a coincidence. I think that, you know, it's a part of, you know, of voices, you know, attempting to be silenced, uh, et cetera. So I think that, you know, continuing to, to spread light on that is important because obviously we want our voices to be heard. Next question is from Steve Magargi. Congratulations. I was just wondering, we're doing something regarding the scheduling change this year where sometimes you're facing the same opponent in back-to-back -back games. And I know it's done this season for obvious reasons to cut back on travel with the pandemic, but do you like that dynamic playing the same team in back-to-back -back games or in ordinary, if there's in future years, would you like to see that continue or do you like to, would you rather go back to normal? Um, do I like it? I don't have a preference. Um, to be honest, not a like or a dislike. Um, to be honest, it, it does kind of help prepare for the playoffs. Uh, but it, obviously, if you have an injury or if somebody's out or something like that, that could really affect, you know, the gerrymandering at the end of the year. Because uh, if you play a team that's in your conference twice or in your division twice, and say if you had an important player out for both games, um, obviously that could switch up things towards the end of the season. But you know, I don't really have pre uh, preference, to be honest, in my opinion. I like, um, but I could see why it could go back and forth. It could be debated. Next question is from Sherrod Blakely. Hey, Jalen, how's it going? How's it going, Sherrod? Good, good, good. Hey, listen, uh, a year ago this time, I know things are very different. Your alma mater down there in Marietta was celebrating a state title. Uh, you guys were, were, things were somewhat normal before things shut down. How has this year transformed you, Jalen, as a person, as a player, uh, from where you were a year ago this time? Uh, in a lot of ways, I think. And a lot of people are probably, you know, resonate. I think it transformed everybody. You know, a lot of stuff was going on. Um, everybody was quarantined. You know, 2020 was the, the year of reflection in a sense. So a lot of people were forced to, to sit down and look at themselves in the mirror. So, you know, a lot of things have changed. A lot of um, businesses have closed. A lot of um, establishments have remodeled themselves. A lot of people's friendships, relationships, the dynamics have changed just all around the world, um, et cetera. So those same changes have happened in my life as well. So, you know, um, I think 2020, that that's the year, that's what it was designed for. So so people who experienced that, I don't think they should beat themselves up over it. You know, everybody was kind of feeling it. You weren't alone. So I know I wasn't alone. Taylor Snow. Hey, Jalen. Uh Jason was talking with us earlier uh, about the possibility of matching up against you at some point tonight. And he was saying how he already knows all your moves isn't going to let you score. Um, so are you, do you think you're going to have to pull a little something extra out of your bag tonight or how do you think that's going to go down? 
against JT? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> um, nothing extra needed. <laughs> uh, you know, get them puppies moving, and it's wrap. That's, it's, we good. So I'm looking forward to it, though. Uh, I mean, JT obviously will play, you know, one-on-one. He think he know my moves, but I tell him all the time, like, I ain't got to do too much. He think he know my moves. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think it should be fun. We're all looking forward to it, uh, Jalen. The next question is from Valencia King. Hey, Jalen, appreciate you taking the time. Valencia King with Real Talk Sports. I know that you've always taken pride in being involved in the community. Now, even though it looks a little bit different due to the pandemic, when you have those moments where you can connect with youth and kids, how does that impact you as a person and a player? I'm sorry, repeat that one more time. Yes, no problem. I was asking, I know you take pride in giving and in being involved in the community. So when you get a moment, I know it looks a little bit different due to the pandemic, but when you have a moment connecting with youth and kids, how does that impact you as a person and a player? Can I get a thumbs up if anyone else can hear me? I heard your question. We got a little bit of a freeze on Jalen's end. We'll try to work on it here. Okay, no problem. Thank you. I mean, who laid their lives on the line for me to be able to, to stand here or to be on this computer screen or to be able to in Atlanta and move around freely. So I feel like there should be people in our generation that should be able to do the same thing. Uh, and I identify as one of those people. So everything is for the next generation. Uh, everything is for the youth. Everything is trying to make the world a better place. Um, so that's, I guess, that's the impact it kind of, you know, makes on me, but that's what it's about at the end of the day. Gary Washburn. What's up, Jalen? Um, there's a player, I think, put for the G League and not Ignite, uh, one of the kids who literally just came out of high school and they kind of tapped him a young Jalen Brown, um, how does that feel? You're 24, but how does that feel to kind of be where players are starting to be compared with you? How does it feel when kids say they want to be like you? What's how humbling is that? And how how does that make you feel knowing that obviously you're a role model on and off the floor, but just the, that that kind of you're not a, a young player anymore. You're 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 an all star. Yeah, I'm an old player now. You can say it. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm getting old. That's yeah, I mean. That's, that's great. I mean, fantastic. I mean, a lot of work, you know, has put into, you know, where I'm at today. Um, so this experience is is a win, you know, a lot of adversity in my career, a lot of people who have supported me, despite, you know, you know, the naysayers, despite all the, the pessimists, despite all the fans or medias or the booze, whatever. Um, so I, I definitely, you know, I'm happy and the people that have been with me, I celebrate this with them together right now. So to have other people who, who are looking up to me uh, or are influenced by me, I think that's a humbling feeling for me uh, because uh, it hasn't been easy this path, you know, and there's still a long way to go. And this is just the beginning, but even just to get to this point, it was a lot of roadblocks in a way and mentally I had to be very, very strong. So. To be able to be a role model for somebody else is is an, an, an accomplishment for me in itself. Uh, it, it means that you know I've kind of persevered through a lot. Um, so I definitely want other people to inspire other people going through anything in life. You know, to be able to persevere through whatever they're going through, mental health issues, um, just normal adversity, etc., and having a growth mindset within that is what it's about. So a lot of times people message me and say, you know, you represent growth. Like I've been able to watch you play basketball and I've seen your growth and things like that. So it makes me feel like, you know, I can continue to grow in my life. And it's nothing better when people say things like that. So um, it's a very, very humbling feeling. Feeling Sorry for the long answer. Cameron Buford. Hey, Jalen. Um kind of on the same note, uh, I want, want you to talk about playing for a league that really has an impact on 
society, not just here in America, but the whole world. Uh, you you obviously was a big part of that last year, but would you just elaborate on how that feeling is and, and that unity between your, the players and the, and the league really trying to have a major impact in society? And congratulations yeah. for being an all-star, by the way. Apologize for that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, sports is like the, one of the most influential things in the world, you know, especially in the world we are today. Or maybe it's always been, you know, even even predates, you know, history, but, you know, sports outside of like maybe like religion and music is so influential. So, you know, being a basketball player, you know, uh, you have a great responsibility because it does have an impact on our society and the NBA does have an impact on our society. So every time I, I get out of bed, I try to, you know, have use my platform with the understanding of that, is that I, even though if I didn't choose that or if I'm not willingly aware of that, um, it's the truth. Like people are going to be looking up to me. I'm a role model. My name, my my energy has reached households that I haven't even been a hundred miles of. So that's just the nature of it. So just having an understanding that you know that sports is so influential, and I'm a I'm a role model. I'm a member of my community. Um, I'm a member of my extended community. Uh, and now I'm a member of the Boston Celtics. So um, all of that stuff has an enormous effect on the community outside. So just try not to take that for granted. Eric Walden. Hi, Jalen. Thank you for your time. Uh, we're days away now from the one year anniversary of you know Rudy Gobert's positive test, uh, Donovan Mitchell testing positive the next day. Um, you know, you spoke earlier to 2020 being a transformational year in a lot of ways. Can you kind of take me back to that night a year ago and, and kind of how you learned of it and what your reaction was to it and, and kind of, you know, how quickly your, your sense of scope about the situation kind of came into focus? Um, I have been keeping up with it prior to like hit the NBA. So I was already preparing and trying to prepare my family for what was was to come and uh and it was a blessing that I was able to do so um but uh yeah as soon as it hit the NBA things became you know crazy media headlines but uh it's 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 almost like I don't know what to even say like I don't think you can really prepare for something like that or that anybody could anybody was ready for what was about to happen um, so in the midst of it being a year, um, it's not over um, yet, but, you know, we still got to do the best we can to stay safe. Uh, we still got to do the best we can to strive for equality within the, the healthcare system um, because there's still dynamics within that that aren't being talked about as much. Um, and we still got to, you know, make a lot of changes going forward. John Corrales. Aylin, have you had any opportunity to um, <clears throat> practice for the three-point shootout, shooting off of racks, and do you have any particular strategy going into that competition? Uh, the strategy is to win. Um, or uh, it's, it's, I'm great. I'm extremely grateful to be here. I'm gonna have some fun. That's my strategy. Um, my strategy is to you know put the ball in the basket, you know, as much as I can. Um, obviously, it's little details that you know I paid attention to and I worked on. But for the most part, you know, have fun, smile, and, and try to bring it, try to bring it home.